working on my barn star sampler quilt i am on block number 11 and before i get started sewing on my block i want to share a few things with you so i had my book spiral bound um, by a local print company so i know i've shared that before but i wanted to share it again i also want to share with you how i'm organizing everything because i feel like some people could use some organization tips and i always love when people like kind of refresh my memory of like oh yeah i knew about that idea but I just forgot about it, so I'm not implementing it. So I am keeping my project in a project bag. So everything is in this bag. All my scraps, everything is in here. Um, I don't wanna put anything back on my shelf, no fabric in my scrap bins, no fabric in my on my shelf, because if I have to um, go looking for a piece of fabric, maybe I miscut, then I have to go rummage through those areas and I don't want to do that. Um, another way I am organizing my blocks, I am cutting my blocks out and I reuse bags from the quilt store. So you can see this is a quilt store bag. So what I will do is I will cut out my block, put it in here. And for this case, I think block 11, I want to say there are three identical blocks, but I just write on a post-it what block it is and then I put it in the bag. So I've actually cut a few blocks out. So I just have those in their individual bags and they are ready to go. So what I will do is I will take all these bags, place them into my project bag. And then I also take my pattern book like this and I will put that into my bag as well. So there you go. So then I have everything all together in one bag. And then I just put that in the closet with all of my um, quilting supplies. So when I want to work on this project, I just grab it out. I know everything's put together. Block number 11. So I am just sewing the first step and it says to place two squares right side together, mark a line down the center, and then sew on either side of the center. Well. Instead of marking my line, I'm using my diagonal seam tape right here from Cluck Cluck Sew. Um, you can get it on her website. And, it's, and I will place the corner of my block on this black line here. And then that will put a stitch a quarter inch from the center. So instead of marking my line, I am just using my seam tape. So let me show you what that looks like. So up one of my wedges here. Okay, so it did say to sew on either side of the center. So you can see right here, I've only sewn um, one line. So now I need to turn it over and I'm going to place this point. Let me zoom in here. The point of my fabric on my um, black line here. And you can see right there, it is marked with the quarter inch right here. So that's where the core, the point of my block will go. I'll make sure that when, as I sew it all the way through that the bottom point stays on that black line as well. So let me show you what that looks like. So as I'm sewing, I'm making sure that the corner or the point of this fabric stays on this black line. Okay, and I'll sew one more of my wedges. My wedges are piling up, which I love. Okay, so now I have stitches on either side. And if you can't see it, let's see, you can kind of see maybe a little bit better there. So instead of drawing that line, I just use my seam tape and now I have two stitches. I should be able to cut on that center and then I'll have two half square triangles. step is to make flying geese units so I'm using this raspberry fabric which is my favorite 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 and then some background fabric so I'm gonna be making flying geese it says I have to make four per block and I'm making three blocks
Still working on block number 11 and I wanted to share where I'm at. So this is where I'm at. Um, I had to make these half square triangles and it says to square them up to two and a half inches on block number 11. And I did have to square these up and I did have quite a bit of um, trimming. So I would really recommend, you know, squaring up when it says to square up um, on block number 11. So this is the first step on block number 11. It said square these up to two and a half inches. So I did that. I had plenty of trimmings on both of those, on all of those. And then I had to make some flying geese units. So that's where I'm at. My next thing I'm gonna be doing is the square and the square unit using the, um, let's see, using F. So this brown fabric and using E, my aqua fabric. So I'm going to be making one unit per block. And since I'm making three blocks, I have three here. So I'm sewing my square and a square units. And I don't use um, a pencil and mark the back of my blocks. I just use my diagonal seam tape again. And I wanna make sure this does say to do a square and a square unit and then the instructions are on the back of the book. So throughout this pattern, when it tells you to refer to a page, I have been referring to the page. So it looks like, okay, so right here, let me show you in the book. So right here on step three, Oops, sorry. Um, it says to complete a square to square unit, complete one, or make one unit, and then it also says um, see page 76. So if I flip to page 76, um, here it says square and a square unit, and it shows you how to do that. So I try to refer to the instructions. If it tells me to refer to a page, I do try to look at that. So I'll assemble the square and a square unit by attaching the smaller squares on top of the larger square, um, two of them at a diagonal, trim those, press those, and then I'll add the last two. So I do like to chain piece. Do you guys like to chain piece? I know, I've, I think I've asked that before, so I probably have already heard the answers. <laughs> so sorry if I've already asked you guys before. Um, but yeah, I like to chain piece. Instead of making one block, I make more than one block at a time. On this directional fabric here, I try to watch and see if it's going the right way, the same way. Um, and maybe it's not going to matter in the end, but I try to do that. Sorry, you guys can kind of hear my dryer going in the background. I have laundry going, so my dryer's going, my washing machine's going. sewing on my wedges and my secondary quilt. So now I'll take these over and I will trim off the corner units here and then press them with the iron and I will be right back. So next I'm going to add my second square on this main square and I will do it at a diagonal across from the first one. So as I'm sewing this, I'm curious if you guys can hear me as I'm sewing and I'm talking. Um, but I'm just curious if you guys have any big quilt projects you're working on. Um, when I'm done with the Barn Star Sampler, I'm already thinking about what will I make next? What should I work on next? Should I tackle another quilt and maybe share with you guys as I make a quilt block by block? Should I work on some tutorials? Um, and show you guys some things and what works for me when I work on projects. Um, you have to let me know what you guys, does anybody have anything they wanna say or any comments? I'm curious if anybody has any input or thoughts on that. I, um, I'm just thinking, what will I work on after the Barn Star Sampler's done? What quilt? I always have little projects going here and there, but I just wonder if I should find, hey, another big quilt and kind of work on a quilt. Um, let me know what you guys think. If you have anything you think I should work on. Okay, let me trim these and press these with the iron. I will be right back. I'm going to add my third square to this square and a square unit. And I don't really feel super chatty today, but I thought when I was making this 
video, I would kind of slow it down, I guess, and show you more of the sewing. And then I've just been thinking, what could I talk about while I'm sewing? Um, I know some of these videos are really short because I edit them and I try to make them short. And I also don't always, um, let's see. I also, let's see, what was I gonna say? <laughs> um, sometimes I don't record very much. So I don't record all the steps and I'm like, oh wow, I, I completed you know several steps and I didn't record anything. So maybe I should record more. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to do today is just record more of the process and chat with you guys. So yeah, I'm just thinking what will I work on after the Barnstar Sampler? And um, I'm curious what projects you guys are working on. Do you guys have things going on? Do you have baby culture making, wedding culture making, maybe a quilt you're making for yourself? Um, Fourth of July, I always love patriotic quilts. And so that's kind of on my mind. You know, that's in the summer. Okay, I'll trim these and press them and be right back. So the last square of fabric is going on this square and a square unit. I think the only thing I have pressing as far as um, quilt projects, and maybe it's not really pressing, but the only thing I have as far as things I need to get done is I need to get those graduation quilts done. And that's the only thing that is, um, I guess my works in progress that actually has a deadline. So that's the only thing I have going on. I don't want to have you guys have to comment tons of stuff, but I just keep thinking of, oh, I should ask this. Oh, I should ask this. Is anybody working on a Barnstar sampler? Um, as I'm making this, I just think to myself, will I make this Barnstar sampler again? Or I wonder if I'll just find a block. Um, my bag of wedges. I wonder if I'll just find myself making a block from the pattern book here and there or what I'll end up doing. Um, but let me know. Okay. So I know I keep asking you guys, let me know this, let me know this, but let me know down in the comments. Do you guys like kind of these chatty videos or do you just like watching the, the sewing and seeing the end block and the end result? Um, I'm curious what you think. Sometimes I find that I have time to listen um, and watch videos, like longer videos, and then sometimes I find like my time's short, so I just, um, I speed up the video and I don't listen to all the the talking or the stories because I don't have time for that. But anyway, um, I'm just curious if you guys like these kind of videos, let me know. Okay, I got my square to square unit done. I just have to press this, trim it, and then I will, um, or I guess I should say I have to trim it and then press them. And then I think I'm ready to assemble block number 11. So I'm just assembling block 11. I have all the steps done and I just have to assemble the block. Um, and I was thinking about this book still, how I was saying, I wonder if I'll use the book again or a pattern again. Um, do you guys typically reuse patterns or books? Um, I guess, <clears throat> excuse me, I feel like this, this pattern book, I feel like is more of something I might use in the future where I feel like sometimes the other patterns aren't because they might just be so specific. It's just a simple pattern, um, per se, like one block and then you put, make a whole bunch of them and make a quilt. But this one has so many different blocks in it. I feel like I could possibly use this book over. Well, I was also thinking about how I, um, I'm going to pin these. I'm having a hard time lining them up and I want them to be nice. So I was thinking about how I, um, have used my Lori Holt Farm Girl Vintage book over and over. And so I was just thinking, gosh, you know, this, this quilt book, the Barnstar Sampler, you know, it really is a good one. And I feel like most of the pattern, most, I feel like all of the blocks were written very well. I think I might have had one hiccup. I did have a hiccup in the beginning and I remember sharing that with you guys. Um, you know, and if it says, make sure to square the blocks or make sure that your blocks finish at this size, 
And if it's talking about that along the way, your steps along the way, I definitely feel like that's something I had to pay attention to and know that that was something that really needed to be focused on in this pattern. Um, but I really like this book. I feel like it's really well written. Um, I do feel like it was well worth the money. I want to say it was $27.95. Um, but I feel like it was worth the money because I can make lots of blocks from this quilt book. So, um, but I, yeah, I used Lori Holt's Farm Girl Vintage book um, several, several times, so many times. So I actually, last year I entered a quilt into the fair and my quilt won best of show and I used Lori Holt's Farm Girl Vintage book one and two. And I made an assortment of blocks and then I put it to put all those blocks together and made a quilt. Um, and I was very happy with it. I, I pieced the quilt and I machine quilted it, free motion quilted it on this Juki machine, this Juki TL 2000 QI that I sew on this one right here. Um, and I was really happy. Well, I, first of all, I was really excited and shocked that I actually won best of show. That was so exciting. So, so exciting. But um, Lori Holt's book, The Farm Girl Vintage book, I just have loved her book. I feel like sh her patterns, she's written a really good book, and I feel like her patterns are written so well, um, easy to follow, all those things. So um, I was just thinking, you know, I could make maybe some more blocks from that book. So I have made some of her patterns, or her blocks, I mean, for my blue and white quilt. I've taken like her star block and her flying geese block. But um, yeah, I, I might wanna make some more of her quilt blocks again because it's, there's always new fabrics to use and I have different ideas. And so that's something I'm kind of thinking about doing um, one of these days. So don't know if it'll be this year or not, but that is something I have thought of. done and these finish at eight inches by eight inches each and I think they turned out pretty darn good block number 11 in the book and here are my blocks if you want to see pictures of my completed barn star sampler quilt blocks you can see those on my Instagram at dresses and spurs Thanks for following along, you guys. I appreciate it. See ya.